of the Interstate Succession Law, PNDC Law 111, in June 1985, was greeted with joy by the women of Ghana. The National Council on Women and Development organized women to march through the principal streets of Accra to demonstrate their appreciation to the government of the day for providing relief to widows and children who had been denied properties belonging to their husbands or fathers by extended families. The memorandum to the law states that its promulgation was aimed at removing anomalies in the existing law relating to interstate succession, recognize the growing importance of the nuclear family as against the extended family. Before the PNDC law 111, there were existing rules that govern our inheritance system. And these depended on the type of marriage, one's religious background, and the systems that applied. For instance, if you were married under the marriage ordinance, that is CAP 127, you, your inheritance system differs. And there were um, anomalies and discrimination against how a widow what a, a widow inherits or what a widower inherits. Then also, if you marry under the customary law, again, the rules differ. If you married under the Mohammedan marriage ordinance, that is CAP 129, there, so there was a requirement that the marriage had to be registered. And again, a number of uh, Muslim women were not even aware of the registration requirements. So this necessitated the need to have a unified system of inheritance, which will also remove discriminatory practices. One day, my, my father came to see me in, my, um, in the house. And he said, I can, I've been reading that you are doing some work with women and um, and um, wanting to bring in new laws and so on. There's one thing that I think that if you do and do right and do it properly, it will help all Ghanaian women and it will also improve on the quality of life for those who lose their, their husbands or lose their wives. So um, I, I asked him what it was and he said it's the law of inheritance and that um, invariably when a, a man dies, his children are thrown out of the house, and, um, and the wife, of course. And that then creates serious problems. So if we can have a law that can protect women and children in this respect, it will help to um, augment that situation. So I bounced it off Mr. Chachuchikata. And Mr. Chachuchikata told me, the best person to go and see would be Mrs. Anijagi, Justice Anijagi. So we went to see Mrs. An he booked an appointment, we went to see Mrs. Anijagi. Mrs. Anijagi then said, my goodness, this is the best thing you can do for me before I die. But along the line, um, she said, it's going to be difficult to pass this law unless we make it a law that protects women and men. So the interstate law should be a law that actually protects widows and widowers uh -huh. because there are some men who also suffer because as soon as the wives die they are also thrown out of their homes she said this is not very um, common but it does happen so let's look at both sides of the coin and take it from that angle and that's why it's interstate succession law and not interstate succession law to protect women. The interstate succession law, PNDC law 111, was a groundbreaking piece of legislation. It was radical, it was revolutionary because it went against the grain, it went against 
the customary law grain. We all knew that under the matrilineal inheritance system, it was nephews, nieces, and aunties who benefited. So if your husband died, it was the matrilineal line, especially within the Akan system. It was the matrilineal. It wasn't the wife and the children, but then it was rather the sisters of the man who had died who benefited. And there were several stories of um, wives and children who had been left destitute. It's been a long while, but I still remember vividly. It was not the most perfect, but something that will address the inherent, you know, injustice being meted by, meted to our, our, our women and children on the death of their spouse. So that is why uh, it says that if you die in test it, at least your, uh, your, your wife should not be thrown out and uh, all children, uh, whether uh, <laughs> Uh, children that were legally uh, with you or out of wedlock should all be catered for. As society became more um, modernized and as ma uh, husband and his wife and children became a closer economic unit, sometimes living apart from the traditional setting, there was a closer bond between them and therefore became increasingly obvious that the old system would not hold, particularly where a wife had contributed substantially to the uh, husband's uh, welfare and wealth. Uh, it was then felt that something more had to be done. Um, so this realization um, led to the feeling that widows and children should be better catered for by law. And uh, <clears throat> I can tell you that in 1962-63, an attempt was made to correct this by legislation. I was a member of the Law Reform Commission at that time. And uh, that attempt failed. And then, of course, PNDC 111 was passed, which was well-intentioned. Because a lot of people out there do not know what is involved in the interstate succession law, we try to sensitize the communities. We've trained paralegals who, when cases of that sort come, when it got to do with interstate, they try as much as possible to educate. And then we also have um, one role that we play at our office, where when somebody comes and then informs us that um, the family member has died interested without leaving a will. We try as much as possible to invite the family, especially if there's lots of um, controversies at hand where they are loggerheads as to how the person's property will be shared. And then we try to send a letter, bring both all families together, explain into details what the interstate succession law is. And the legal aid officers at FIDA try as much as possible to distribute the property according to the fractional proportions that has been given to us. Majority of Ghanaian women in the rural areas are still ignorant of their rights under the law, but what was the positive aspect of the PNDC law 111? The positive aspect of the law was that we had inheritance rights of the existing or the surviving spouse and the children of the deceased person being legally recognized and enforceable by a court of law. So after PNDC Law 111 in 1985, we actually had cases being adjudicated in court based on PNDC Law 111. A groundbreaking revolutionary and radical law which made a marked departure from our customary law of patrilineal and matrilineal inheritance. However, it came with its own challenges. It was, it was um, a good law. Um, however, with implementation, a lot of challenges were identified. And I think this has also necessitated a review 
of the existing law. Uh, unfortunately, there were many flaws in the um, in that PNDC 111. One of them was a failure to study the social system before promulgating the law. A failure to consult widely on the meaning of a family who should probably benefit. And the emphasis was on wife and children. But you know, if you are talking of gender, and there's also the mother. The mother may have contributed, sacrificed a lot to the upbringing of the deceased. Another major problem of this law and any subsequent law is that if the marriage, uh, the succession system is built or based on long established traditions or religion, it is difficult to change this as statute. One major gap was application of the law as far as Muslim marriages and Muslim relationships. So those who are Muslims in Ghana, the big question is to what extent was PND Solo 111 applied to distribute property? Because under the Holy Quran, there is a way that property is distributed. So PND Solo 111 came into direct conflict. The International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA Ghana, in collaboration with the Frederick Ebert Foundation, conducted an extensive research throughout the 10 regions of Ghana in 1996 to evaluate the performance of PNDC Law 111. There were a lot of gaps in the PNDC Law 111, and it was held all over the African continent because it was the premier and it was a novelty. By increasing, we realized that a lot of the West African countries have passed, but they have gone beyond that. So we started uh, sending concept notes and uh, documents and everything to uh, the Attorney General's department. So we started this journey from 2009 and we've been doing a lot of lobbying with Parliament, we've been campaigning, we've trained Parliament, we've done with especially the committee, that's the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Committee in Parliament and then the gender committee, gender and children committee in parliament. We've had numerous meetings with them. But as it is, every four years, because of the change of government, new people come on board, so we continue to train and all that. The new bill introduces new phenomena like uh, polygamous relationships. Now there's provision for the wife, there's provision for the children, there's provision. There are new terminologies now for what is contribution. Uh, the, the percentages that were, it used to be uh, some percentages, ratios, but now they are doing it percentages. So it's a little bit more easier to implement than the, 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 the law as it is now, PNDC law. So government is seeking to strengthen and further protect inheritance rights of Ghanaians have come up with the Interstate Succession Bill. It is presently being considered in parliament we are hoping that before the end of the year this bill will be adopted and promulgated and approved and passed by parliament we are having uh, some challenges with passing it because uh, it's, it's, it's another um, bold attempt by the country to resolve uh, challenges in, in, in succession. And since we are a multi sectorial, multi religious society, uh, people are having difficulty in accepting the bold proposals. And so, anytime uh, we try to move um, amendments to the proposal that has been brought, it's led to heated debates. And so, there have been delay since 2013 to pass this legislation. Uh, what I have directed and the chairman of the committee is taking up is that we should do all we can to pass the intensive succession law, the property rights and uh, the property rights of spouses 
and also the right to information bills. These are of serious priority to Parliament now and we hope that in the next meeting of the House and before the elections we will be passing some of these legislation. So this year I think it's a cut-off period. The Ministry has shown tremendous interest in these laws and the Minister has indicated it's prepared to do what it could to support Parliament to pass them and we are very grateful for that.